Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. I want to make this intro super quick. I just want to open up a reading vlog where I am going to be doing spoilers for the new release Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. I am so excited about this book. I've been like hawking the window to see if the mailman has delivered it and it is finally here. I literally just got this book in my hands like an hour ago. I am so incredibly excited about this book. So not only am I going to read it and devour it and love it hopefully, but I'm buddy reading it with Jacqueline um, from her channel name is Jacqueline. And I am also gonna be doing the Booktubers and Brews live show at the end of the month. I think it's like the 27th I wanna say. I am sporting my Booktubers and Brews um, coffee mug so I have some coffee and I'm just ready to dive in you guys so I'm gonna be doing spoilers in this vlog I'm gonna be reading passages from this I'm gonna be reacting to everything see where all right so I went ahead and I read the first part of a survivor song by Paul Tremblay and I'm here to fill you in on my thoughts so far. Um, I am buddy reading this with Jacqueline and we decided to break it up into parts. So last night and today we're reading part one, um, probably tonight and tomorrow we're reading part two, and then the next day we'll read part three. Three. Um, this is actually going a lot quicker than I thought it would, which is great because I have been slumping lately, like just not in the mood to read. And I think it has to do with like other things that I'm enjoying a little bit more than reading right now, but also just the things that I'm picking up to read aren't capturing my attention like Beach Read did, like the Bromance Book Club did and things like that. So this is definitely highly readable because um, it's just so interesting. Um, so it starts off with the prelude, which I just want to read you the very first paragraph here. It says, this is not a fairy tale. Certainly it is not one that has been sanitized, homogenized, or Disney-fied, bloodless in every possible sense of the word. Beasts and human monsters defamed and claws clipped, the children safe and the children saved, the hard truths harvested from hard lives, if not lost, then obscured and purposely so. All right, friends, I had to jump outside to talk to you because my husband's working from home. He has a million meetings. The air conditioner is on, so sorry. And it's actually, it's like the sun is out, but it's kind of overcast. I wonder if we're supposed to get rain today. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about part one of Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. Um, I read you the first paragraph and I just think it like really sets the mood. So the prelude is done in these like gray pages as you, if you can tell the difference between like the regular and the prelude. Anyway, it's really crazy. It kind of sets up the whole story about like what's going on and how people are questioning what's going on. So the premise of the story is, is that there has been this outbreak of rabies and the, um, the onset of symptoms and the time that it takes to infect someone is so much faster than it normally is. So it opens up with, um, I don't know, the wildlife services um, informing the public that the, the rabies vaccine baits are being dropped. So they're dropping all these baits, hoping that the animals like consume this bait and then it like kills off, um, you know, the animals that have rabies and stuff like that. And then there's people freaking out that like, okay, so you have all of this bait and this vaccine, like, what if kids get a hold of it? What if, you know, um, just stuff like that. And also it's talking like about on Facebook about how, um, just different people like chiming in and really like everybody's quarantined right now because people that have had it they kind of go crazy and turn into these like almost zombie-esque characters like um they don't like water they start biting people they're like very violent and stuff like that 
and it's just funny it says a small sample of the unedited comments to the Facebook um, comment or whatever and it says what if animals eat what if an animal eats like 20 of these this sounds really dumb there has to be a better way so it's all just like different little like um quotes but it's completely believable like this is literally what i think people that were commenting on a facebook post would talk about um because there's some people taking it very seriously there's some people not taking it seriously there's some people really concerned and there's others that are like whatever this is really happening these are what people are like thinking and it goes through the story about Natalie and Paul and Natalie and Paul are married and Natalie is pregnant. Um, he has left and has gone to the grocery store to pick up their rations. And when he gets home from that, um, they're attacked by like one of these zombie people. So that's what the prelude is. Then we jump into part one, which switches narrative a little bit and feels very different than the prelude. And it's Ram's chapter, which Ram is Ramola Sherman. She's a pediatrician. Um, and we kind of learn a little bit more about her and her family and what she's doing. And she's, I guess they put, just like in real quarantine, they have like different waves of people going in. So like the first wave went in and she's part of the second wave and she's supposed to be reporting to work the next day. So she contacts um, two of her really good friends who happen to be nurses and they start this text message conversation that lasts a couple of pages. And they're talking about how they're not really um, prepared. They did this like online training that doesn't really train them properly. And it leaves a lot of questions um, about to like how to handle certain things, how to answer certain questions that patients might have. And it also um, shows that they don't have the equipment that they really need to face this properly and um they're even talking about like the masks that they wear and just like everything so it's like very much feels realistic and believable because of corona um so then on page 38 is where i found out that rams is actually the nickname because i was like rams are they talking about the animal like what's going on but um it says is the nickname the nickname is a holdover from their college days and Natalie is the only person who continues using it. That's how the prelude connects to this first part. So Rams is actually a college friend of Natalie who was the person in the first part. And Natalie has contacted Rams and is like, I'm on my way to you, um, I need your help. And basically, there was a confrontation back in the prelude um, when a zombie-ish person, a person infected, um, broke into their home. Because, like, when their husband got home, and I guess they were unloading the rations or something, they didn't secure the door right away. And he was able to, like, break in, killed her husband, um, attacked her, and she got bit. And like I said, it is super readable, um, even though... <laughs> I don't know if I had to rate the story right now I would give it three stars based off of part one because there's things that are like really cool really interesting really believable very like interesting there's parts that are just like really slow really boring not over described but like don't need to be described and like they're spending so much focus on getting from point a to point b um that they're really not focusing on like the virus and the people that have the virus or interactions with people that have the virus or rabies or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I thought that it was going to focus a little bit more on that. And I understand that it's like the survival part of it. And I think it is, but it just says like, beautifully detailed, viscerally frightening and deep with emotional resonance. So, breathlessly compelling read, powerful, powerfully frightening, and very moving. A nightmare that rings all too terribly true. So that is, it does ring like, yeah, this could happen like with COVID. None of us would have said, you know, a year ago that that was going to happen. So this could absolutely happen. But like the quarantining aspect and stuff like that, like, it's all believable, but it's just not 
interesting to read about. Hello friends, I am here with an update of Survivor Song. So basically, I think it was yesterday or the day before, my friend Jacqueline that I'm buddy reading this with, we're gonna do the booktubers and brews live show on her channel. You know who I'm talking about. I'm gonna link her down below. Um, but we're buddy reading this. And it took her forever to finally read part one, but like, it was no big deal because I wasn't really enjoying it, you know? It was just like, not what I expected. But I was holding out hope still that it would get better. Well, the day that she said that she finished part one, I read part two. So I read from 125 to 235. So I read this section right here and it didn't get much better. So when I read part one and I told you guys, I was thinking a three star rating would probably be, like if I were to stop the book there, that's what I would give it. I would give it probably three stars. Now that I've read the second part, I'm going down. I'm thinking a two stars. I mean like maybe a three if I'm being generous, but like probably a two stars. I think I went into this with totally different expectations than what the book is actually like coming to be about. I thought it was going to focus on these um, like, I don't even know how to say it, not zombies, but the people that have been infected with this, with rabies. But it is much more focused on these two women, Rams and Nat, as they are trying to get, basically, in the very beginning, Nats is at home, waiting for her husband to get home from the grocery store. He went to go pick up rations. He gets home, they're unloading the rations, and I guess they didn't secure the front door properly, and a man that has been infected has broken into their home, well, not really broken in, has gotten in the front door, and they tried to stop him, but he ends up attacking Paul, um, her husband, and killing him and um, like repeatedly bashing his head and then Natalie gets a knife and like stabs the guy and she basically gets away so she's left her husband there she has no idea the outcome of that but she's rushing toward her friend Ram's house and Ram is a doctor or you know something of that sort um, well the dragonfly just landed there a doctor and she thought that like maybe she could help her out so she gets to Ram's house and then Ram and her go to um, a hospital. Of course, there's it's a long part of them getting to the hospital because it's just so overly described that it is ridiculous. And I'll get more into that in a minute. Um, so they get to the hospital finally and then everything you know she gets a booster shot or like a vaccination shot or something like that and but they still don't know if that was like in time they don't know if that's helped they just don't know and then but she's pregnant natalie's pregnant so they're like well what we need to do is we need to just have a cesarean we need to get this baby out of you okay fine so then they're going to transfer her to another hospital well, in the meantime people in the hospital have gone crazy because of this virus it's spread it's taken hold and there's been attacks and there's been gunshots and they need to get out of there so they make it out of the hospital they get in this ambulance and they're headed to the clinic that's where part one ends um, nothing is really scary nothing is frightening um, so they're in the ambulance on the way to the clinic and they're going down this main road called Bay Road and they're literally describing every single thing that's happening like you're literally hearing natalie talking to this app in her phone to like her future child just in case she doesn't make it and like she's telling her telling him or her these long stories and and kind of babbling and it's not really making sense and then you'll switch to ram's perspective and it almost retells you what it said in natalie's part like it's just, and then they describe everything that's going on on the road and everything they're thinking and feeling and they're, they're flashing back, not really flashing back, but like wondering what happened and what's gonna happen. And it's just like, just get to the clinic. So they end up bumping into, well, no, as they're driving, this coyote rams into the side of the ambulance. 
I guess that was supposed to be scary. It wasn't really scary. And then a car out of nowhere like hits them behind the door on the passenger side, like a little bit behind Natalie. They get out of the car, there's two teenagers, and the two teenagers are like, you know, like he's a zombie, don't mess with them, blah, blah, blah. They end up having to kill that dude. Um, and now these two teenagers are part of this and they're like, you know, she's, the ambulance is wrecked now, so they can't drive it to the clinic. And they're like, how are we going to get to the clinic? Do you guys know where we can get a car? You know, they're like, no. Um, so then one of the boys decides to ride ahead to the clinic and tell them to like, come you know he knows where the location is come back get the pregnant woman take her so they're thinking like okay it's gonna be another hour well it's already been like more than an hour so the boy goes and they just decide that they're gonna walk to the clinic it's like two miles away or something like that i don't even remember how long they get out and they start walking well of course natalie is like experiencing more and more symptoms she's not as um like she's not having hallucinations but she's not as lucid and um she also there's a whole scene about how she thinks that like she's doing the um against water thing like the hydrophobic thing um so just definitely like she's infected and she's not like a total zombie yet but like she's close um so they're walking and then they end up it's been a long time and then the kid is driving back and they're like oh he's coming with help no he's back with nobody saying oh my gosh there's this gang of there's like this gorilla group up ahead that's going door to door knocking i didn't feel comfortable going past it looks really scary i don't think we should go that way i think we should find a different way and they're like what the heck we need to get Natalie to the clinic ASAP to get the baby out that doesn't end up happening so they are still walking they walk they actually get on the backs of the bikes like on the spokes or the little kickstand you know they have the little things that you can stand on go on the bikes sorry right, I had to come inside because it started like little raindrops were coming down and also the bird totally distracted me and I needed to change my battery so back to this so there ends up being like an altercation between some of these like zombie things and some of these like men in this group that are like marching down the street like guerrilla militia style um and the writing is literally telling you every single little piece of the puzzle where their hand is like and they're mentioning all the names of the people and it's like I don't know any of these people and I really don't care to know any of these people so can we just like get to the point like there's a scuffle things are happening people are dying like I get it like get out of there and then at the Towards the end of this section, they finally make it to the clinic and the clinic is busing people away from the clinic to another location. Um, and we don't really know why, what's going on, if they're going to be able to get on the bus. I think they do get on the bus. I'm not really sure. Um, and then part two ends with an interlude, another of these like grayish type like page things that um yeah it's basically flashes back to like what happened to the teenage boys after the women get on the bus and um that part is like a little sad but like not really at the same time like let me show that i'm a human being and i'm sad okay i shed a tear it's not really that sad but it shows like why their parents weren't around while they were out why they were able to be out there like zombie hunting in the first place and it just shows like their really strong friendship between each other so that it was a little sad but it wasn't like sad enough you know what i'm saying obviously we're in my car um so welcome back um i'm here to do my final update on survivor song i'm just ready to be done with this book done with this vlog and move on to something hopefully much better so i I am, once again, I'm going to remind you, I am reading this because, number one, it's one of my most anticipated books of the year. Number two, back in March, when I did the Booktubers and Brews live show on Jacqueline's channel, where we read Dry by Neil Schusterman, we thought that this was kind of like an adult version of that, and I definitely think it is a little bit. Um... I gave Dry by Neil Schusterman five out of five stars and I absolutely loved it. 
Um, and so I pre-ordered this book and Jacqueline got it as well. And we decided that we were going to buddy read it together. And then we made it our booktubers and brews live show for this month. So I know we're like encouraging a lot of you guys to read this and I almost want to apologize to you. I have seen that some people are enjoying it and that is shocking to me. I say that if you read this and loved this or enjoyed this and you haven't read Dry by Neil Schusterman and you read YA to definitely pick that up because I thought it was done so much better. I thought the writing was so much better. I thought the the vibes and the message and the traveling from one place to another was done so much better. I ended up reading Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay two stars you guys I don't know I almost want to give it one you know what I'm saying like I literally was like battling myself to like should I give this a one or should I give this a two but anywhere one two or three higher than a three I think you're on crack um so the reason why I went with two stars instead of three stars is because the um prelude right in the beginning was very good I thought it was a great opening to the story it really gave me those creepy vibes the scene that happens absolutely cool amazing awesome I also liked the slight touches of commentary on the division between the general population and like the government and even doctors when there is a global pandemic. Um, and I liked that. I also liked that um, our character Rams is, um, I think she says that she's, yeah, that she's asexual. She thinks of herself as asexual. So I really like that it has like an asexual main character in here. Not that that comes too into play, but it is a part of the story because our other main character, Nat, is infected and the incubation period is an hour. So she travels to her best friend Ram's house who happens to be a doctor and asks her for help. They make their way to a hospital. Then from the hospital, they have to make their way to another hospital and on the way there, it, it's basically like them trying to get to safety to deliver uh, Nat's baby early because she's been infected. And of course, she's leaving messages. Nat is leaving messages on this Voyager app for her soon to be born child, hopefully. And you know, it's just kind of sad, you know. And then you have Ram who's trying to almost deny that her friend is infected and hope that she can save her but then there becomes a part of the novel that there's just no turning back. Natalie is absolutely infected and Natalie makes Ram's promise to adopt her child, her unborn child. And she agrees and she promises and all of that. So they go from the hospital to the other hospital. They get on a bus. They're going from the bus to somewhere else and yeah, just crap goes down. And uh, in the third part, uh, Rams has to basically perform cesarean section with like this huge ass hunting knife and like a paring knife from the kitchen of this house that's been like abandoned. And Natalie is totally infected. She's turned into like this crazy, you know, rabid thing. And um, yeah, she has to like strap her down and cut the baby out and then there's this part where you don't even know like there are these like blank spots within the text like this and I thought that was gonna make it really creepy but it was really just like I it was purposeful he said it at the beginning that this was like on purpose but I don't think it did anything special to the story at all um and then at the very end the baby does make it so um and then there is a postlude, which starts off very much like the prelude. And then it just goes into basically um, that she did have a daughter and now she's 10 years old. So it's almost like flash forward 10 years later. And that whole like prelude, it just, or what is it called? Is it called a prelude? I'm sorry. I'm all over the place and it's hot in here. So 
um, postlude, obviously. Um, postlude, it just boring. It doesn't fit with the rest of the story. And I kind of felt like it was fine reading it in parts with Jacqueline, like Buddy reading it that way, because every part focused on a different thing. Um, I think the scariest parts to me were, there were two things that I really liked. Um, I liked the prelude, um, how it's Natalie and her husband Paul, and how he's going to the grocery store, and Natalie's kind of waiting for him to come home, and then one of the people, like, break into their house and um, attack Paul, and Natalie has to stab him, and she gets away and all that. So that was really interesting. And I also really liked the part how in the second part, these teenagers kind of get involved in the story. And then at the end of that, one of them has been infected and the other boy kind of like puts them on a rope. And it reminded me of what Miss Sean does in The Walking Dead, how she would always like chain up the zombies and like they would walk ahead of her. And, um, and then at the end of that part, he infects himself like he puts his arm in his friend's mouth and bites down he's basically like without you life isn't worth living and i liked how it was like ram's understanding and seeing her friend succumb to this virus but overall just really not exactly what i was looking for at all and i won't say that i really recommend it i say that if you're looking for something like creepy and spooky definitely check out the cabin at the end of the world i think real world stuff like this just seemed too crazy there were too many things that like wouldn't happen like I just, I don't know. I would like to say it doesn't happen, but then like I would have said coronavirus isn't going to happen. So I don't know exactly like what, maybe just from my talking through things with you, you're going to be able to pick out like whether it would be a book for you or not, but I definitely spoiled everything. So I hope that you actually looked at the title and saw that this was a spoiler vlog. It's my first spoiler vlog. Um, if you like my spoiler vlog this time, let me know if you would like me to do one in the future. And if not, you just like spoiler free vlogs. Let me know that as well. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to join us at the booktubers and brews live show at the end of this month. And if I post this first, then join us. And if I post this after, then like you can always go back and watch that live show. But we all talk about spoilers and stuff like that. But you can also hear other people's opinions on the book as well. So again, that's all for today's video. I hope you're having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again soon.